In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Lord Jesus, we thank you and we praise you that we can be here in your Eucharistic presence. We thank you, Lord, that you are exposed in front of us now. Lord, we just invite you into our hearts now. We thank you for your great love for us. Thank you, Lord, for offering yourself for us on that cross. Help us, Lord, to see that what you did 2,000 years ago is not far from us, but Lord, you offer yourself every single time we come to Mass. Every time we enter that sacrifice, Lord, you are offered up again. And so we thank you and we praise you. We ask you, Lord, that tonight you would fill us with all of the graces that we need. Help us to turn to you, especially in this last week of Lent, to really offer you our entire selves and to really love you the way you love us. Ask your Blessed Mother to protect us and our families from all evil. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Tonight's reflection in front of our Lord, I'd like to pick up where Father Kevin left off last Friday, on the tenth station where Jesus is stripped of his garments. Jesus is stripped of the very last thing that he has. He's completely poor, naked, broken, and exposed. When we look at a cross today, there's always a cloth that's wrapped around Jesus, but there's a tradition that says that Jesus was actually naked on the cross, that every single thing was stripped from him. Every single thing was taken away from him. But did he utter a single word of complaint? No. Not once did Jesus complain. Even in his falls, even in his agony, Jesus never gave up. Yet how easy is it for us to just want to give up? when we're stripped of one thing, when one thing is taken from us. We just want to quit. We want to complain. We want to vent. Yet Jesus is crucified on the cross and he's left with nothing. Even his own skin was torn from him. But not one complaint. Sometimes in our life, God strips us the way he stripped Jesus. Sometimes in our life, God allows us to be broken. God allows us to experience his pain. God allows us to experience loss. That could be with a relationship, a job, a career, a loved one, some kind of pleasure or hobby, or even our own health. We can be stripped of these very things. But it reminds me of the story of Job. Job was a just man, a righteous man, but everything was taken from him. His own family died. His own possessions taken, even to the own point where his own health was taken from him. And Job never complains, and this is what Job says in the Bible. Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked shall I return. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The Lord gives. And the Lord takes, blessed be the name of the Lord. Who are we to complain? Who are we to give up or to quit when life becomes so hard? When we look at the hardest thing that was ever done right in front of our eyes. 
Sometimes we are stripped of things and we'll never know why. But sometimes God strips us of something because he has something better planned. He has something better planned. There's a story of a man who was on a ship. And the ship was in a great storm. And the storm overtook the ship. And everything was destroyed. Now the man that was on this ship was the only survivor and he was washed up onto an island. On that island, the man started to collect the wood that would come from the ship that was destroyed. And from that wood, he eventually made a little hut for himself on that island as that wood was coming in. He made himself a little hut. And that hut was his everything. And from that shipwreck, more things were coming onto that island, and he would take those things and put it into his hut. That hut was his security. It was his home. It was the only thing he had. And inside of that hut was everything he owned. Every single day, the man would go to the highest point of the island. And he would look to see if there were ships, other ships that were coming, so that he could signal them, so that he could be rescued. Every single day, the man would go up to that highest point and have the same routine of looking for those ships so that he could be taken home. One day, the man was on top of that highest point, and he saw some smoke coming from his hut. He started to walk back and then run because he realized that his entire hut was in flames. Everything he owned, everything he had in flames burned. The man gets on his knees and he says, God, if you love me, how could you do this to me? God, if you love me, how could you do this to me? God, if you love me, how could you do this to me? In the midst of his pain and his grief, he passes out on the shore. The man was woken up by someone who shook him. And he wakes up and, and the man who wakes him up says, Are you okay? Are you okay? He says, Thank you for that signal. And the man said, What signal? He said, the smoke that came from your signal was so great. And if it wasn't there, we wouldn't have seen you and we wouldn't have stopped at this island. Thank you for that signal. The man thought he had lost everything. But God took that thing and brought his own salvation and brought him home. If you are angry with God, if you are wondering why, allow God to work. Allow him to bring good out of your suffering. Because when Jesus was crucified on the cross, he transformed suffering. And he brought good from that cross. And now billions of people kneel in front of this cross and worship this pain and this suffering. So God can bring good from what you are stripped of. But you have to have faith. And you have to remember one thing. 
that no matter how much pain you have, no matter, no matter how much you suffer, Jesus is always whispering into your heart, I love you. I'm here for you. Be not afraid. My brothers and sisters, God loves us so much. And if we actually knew how much he loved us, we would die out of such great awe. And so if you can't feel his love, it's okay. But believe in it and know it. Know his love. You don't have to feel it. But look at the cross and know that this was for you. Please kneel. Sabaru sabare theb maria O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. We just ask that you would leave us silently from the church tonight. God bless you all. Thank you.
Oh, 